When you buy an Airstream, you're partially buying the name of quality. I'm just not seeing it on a lot of this stuff. And do I kind of regret buying an Airstream at this point? Yeah, kinda. Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to our grand adventure of traveling to 48 states in 48 days. Today is day 46, and we are in state number 44, West Virginia. This morning, we woke up at Wild Wonderful Off Grid's house to the most beautiful sunrise. We were greeted so kindly by some of the animals on their farm. We said our goodbyes, and we hit the road. Thank you, guys. Right. We will. But now we're pulled over on the side of the road. We got our generator out. We got the Airstream all taken apart. While we travel, we've been hiding a bag of the rarest coffee in the world, one of the best coffees in the world, in each state. And we've been roasting this coffee up while we travel. We're roasting it up fresh. So when you guys find it, it tastes as good as it possibly can. And before we leave, we need to roast up a bag and hide a bag here in wild, wonderful West Virginia. You guys know that's what they call West Virginia? That's like their slogan. So we just pulled off to the Tuscarora Trailhead, right on the border of West Virginia and Virginia. So now I just gotta find a spot. All right, West Virginia, I made this one pretty simple for you guys. I veered off just a little bit off of the path. We're right near the entrance and I'm gonna leave some coordinates right here for you guys. And now we just have to manage turning around and getting out of this spot but there's a huge blind spot at the top of this hill. Yep. Okay, stop. Woo! Yeah. We made it! There, there was a truck coming. Da Mama was helping Daddy navigate to make sure that we were safe. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different and a little bit unusual for us because we have a bone to pick. We've now traveled for over 10,000 miles in this Airstream. We've lived in it for over a month and we have a pretty good grasp on what this Airstream is, what it's good at, and what it's really, really bad at. And we want to share some of that stuff with you guys today. So we're making a little pit stop for the Sade Babe. We got another probably four and a half hours of driving to do today. Also, do you guys remember a couple days ago when I said, oh, I am so excited because we only have 2.8 hours on average to drive every single day for the next eight days. Yeah, yeah I was totally, well. totally inaccurate. <laughs> Welcome back to the great playground tour of the United States of America. A slide in the park and a slide over here. There is a slide over yeah, here. Yeah, it's yummy. Man, it's been so long since I've seen a 100% just all solid wood playground. They don't make them like that anymore. Usually they're all just like plastic and metal now. After living in this Airstream for the last 46 days, there's some things that I gotta say about it. So I'm gonna take a minute here. I'm gonna speed run this. Go through all the things of it that have broken, all the things that I don't like, and then also some of the things that I do like about this thing. I think the thing that I wanna preface all this with is Airstreams are expensive. They're expensive because they legitimize the cost with super high quality, super great longevity. These things are supposed to last decades, and that's the whole idea. You pay more money, you get a higher quality product, and it lasts you longer. And for me, if Airstream's gonna justify being significantly more expensive than other RVs out there, well, the quality better hold up to what they say it's gonna be. So I'm gonna start with the electrical system in here. The electrical system, it's almost like it was installed by someone that's never hooked up an electrical system before. First, not only are all the components pretty bad, this panel completely popped off and I actually had to super glue it in place. You'll see I kind of got a little sloppy with the super glue down here. But all the wiring underneath this bench over here, if you take a look inside, it's just an absolute mess. There's stuff that's held down with duct tape and I've been having a lot of false connections. So I'll wake up sometimes in the morning, the electricity's off, I'm getting all these warnings. I have to go in there and start jiggling certain wires and then when everything kicks back on, I have to tighten those connections back down. So I wouldn't recommend getting an Airstream if you don't want to dive into an electrical system. I also think a lot of the finish work in here is pretty sloppy. It might be hard to see, but this whole piece of trim right here is kind of loose and is falling down. And this is just like popping out and this is all loose. And if you look at this cut here, it's just all frayed on the end. If you just look at how this piece of wood is cut, you can just kind of see how it's not tight at all. And because of that, the trim piece just kind of keeps falling out and it's gotten to a point where we just leave it on the floor now. These screws on these windows are tightened down really, really hard and then some of them are pretty loose. So it just looks like certain screws are just like super indented. A lot of the screws in this thing are backing out. If you look at this thing here, 
can see two screws backed out, and because it's aluminum, now that hole is actually bigger than the screw itself, so I can't even just screw it back into place. And there's screws that are backing out all over the place in this thing. A bunch of the screws on the wall over here are just coming right out. We had this whole door here come off because the screws on the hinges on here just totally came out. These window blinds are pretty awful. This isn't supposed to come off like this, but basically all the blinds are breaking. If you see this one, it's just now like permanently crooked. Probably the most crucial thing and something that almost stopped our trip is the heater in this Airstream. So the heater on the outside of the Airstream, it has a switch and that switch gets covered in dust. So you have to go out there, you have to take the heater apart and you have to clean that switch and you have to blow it off with compressed air. This is probably my favorite thing right here. If you see this light, it just, um, it just totally ripped off of the wall. This toilet I've had problems with, the seal on it has gone bad, and the seal's what stops the gases from the black tank from coming in and sinking up your whole airstream, so I had to take that hole apart, replace the seal, and that seal's less than a year old. You guys see this cut right here and how this, they just made a mistake? Like, they just got it, had to notch, notch us in a little bit more, but it was almost like they were just, didn't have time, and kind of just jammed it in there. And There's a lot of stuff like that where things just aren't, they're just not, tight it looks sloppy another thing is the original foot for this jack just totally fell off so this is just jerry rigged right now and then i think the last thing that i want to talk about is the solar system on here for the amount that this costs there should be more than two i think it's 200 watts or 300 watts of solar in total. Being able to boondock and charge up your batteries is great, but these solar panels don't even really give you enough power to run the fridge. And I think the whole thing with this Airstream is that the amount that you pay, you just really shouldn't see any skimping out. When you buy an Airstream, you're partially buying the name of quality, the name of longevity, the name of, hey, this thing is done right, it's beautiful, and it's gonna last you a long time. And with this one, I'm just not seeing it on a lot of this stuff. So this is what I will give Airstream. The exterior, the shell, the suspension, the aerodynamics when you're pulling this thing, they've all been great. We have no leaks, we have no separation on the trailer, and we drive this thing pretty hard. And do I kind of regret buying an Airstream at this point? Yeah, kinda. I wish that we built something out on our own, because now we have to deal with someone else's and another company's uh, mistakes because they were rushing. And at this point, at this point in our lives, we know how to build stuff, and we know how to do stuff right. I wish we just put some side time aside built out a school bus and did it the right way. I just want to take a quick moment here to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Beam. So many of you guys know this already, but we've been using Beam now for a couple of years and it truly has been a game changer when it comes to the quality of my sleep. And one of the biggest reasons why we still talk about Beam on this channel is because we know it actually works. And we know it actually works for a lot of the people we recommended it to. Beam's Dream Powder is basically a sleepy time hot chocolate that is so delicious and truly works like a charm. The main ingredients are CBD, reishi, magnesium, L-theanine, and melatonin. And when you combine all of those supplements together, this stuff is powerful. Every time I take this stuff before bed, I am asleep within 25 minutes. And you know those sleeps where you close your eyes and it feels like you just wake up in an instant? I feel like I've had more of those in the last two years than in my entire life even with a two-year-old. So for any of you guys out there that struggle with sleep or you know somebody that struggles with sleep, I highly encourage you guys check out Beam's Dream Powder. They have so many amazing flavors and they actually have their biggest sale of the year happening right now with up to 50% off. So click the link down below and take advantage of this limited time offer. So thank you so much Beam for changing my life and for sponsoring today's video. It was great knowing you West Virginia. Actually, I think we're in the border. We're technically in Virginia. So it was great knowing you Virginias, but we're heading out of here because we got four states left and three of those we're gonna try and hit today. It's a very unusual afternoon. It's 2 p.m. And that is because I have not had one sip of coffee today. We are 10 minutes away from a coffee roast. <laughs> oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm still unsure about RV etiquette. Can you just leave your RV in someone's side yard like this? Now that we're getting to the last leg of our trip here, we're kind of been reminiscing all morning about what have been our, you know, highlights, what have been our hardest moments. Dickieville, that was like the first little town we loved. Coffeeville, dad's rocking it. And now we've entered the little town of Berryville. Pumpkin spice waffle. 
could not say no to this. Thank you guys. Bye guys. Feels like we're struggling to make progress today, you guys. We're like pulling over every 30 minutes. If there's any distraction I feel like we can take, we're grabbing. We're tired. It's just like that last mile of a marathon. Oh do, my God. Do you see a turnaround? Google Maps, you've wronged me. So Google Maps decided to bring us down a dirt road. We, it had us come off of the main road and come down a dirt road to act as a cut through. Dang it, Google. Everyone on this road's freaking out. Like if someone's coming this way, they just like stop and freak out. I feel like we're not supposed to be on this road. <laughs> we're almost done. Whoa! We got a mile left. I've eaten a lot of beef jerky sticks on this drive. And this has got to be one of my last. And this one's cool because it says Vermont on it, which is where we're headed. That's all I got to say. It's just a beef jerky stick. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have made it to our 45th state. Welcome to Maryland. I want to scream so loud right now, but Sadie is sleeping. And I'm not going to wake her up, but I just want to get like a woohoo! For most of the driving now, we're going to be going through cities. So right now we're in the center of Baltimore. Then we're going to go right through the heart of Philly. Then we're going to go through New York City. The other downside, our water tank is empty. Our black tank is full. Our gray tank is full. And in this part of the world, RV parks, dump stations, a lot of them are closed for the winter. <sighs> for some reason, I feel like we've been driving just all day, but we're still only halfway. Are you serious? We're only halfway to where our final destination is. We have been driving all day. We left at 7.30. I know, we've just been stopping so many times. <laughs> I feel like they're just a city driving slower too. It is. Yeah, I have we to hit, take this thing so slow. We're we almost done. We're almost done. We do? One more day, honey. One more day. Two more days. Two more days. I can't go on. <laughs> this is when you're supposed to say, I'll never let go. And then you push me off into the freezing cold water like in the Titanic. That's what, imagine how, she, dude, cold blooded. She says, I never let go as she pushes him into the cold water. I've never been this excited as to get to a Walmart before. Mostly just because we're going to post up for a couple hours. I'm totally out of gas. <laughs> Driving through cities is just exhausting. You guys. Do you see what I see? Do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? Let's go, baby! Panda! Panda! This is going to be the last Panda Express we see for a while. I gotta do something. You guys know where this is going. Right there, baby. This is the Panda Express in Abingdon, Maryland. So good luck, you guys. Good luck, Maryland. Enjoy the coffee, but more importantly, enjoy the Panda Express. This is gonna be one of the most challenging drives of the whole trip. Gotta drive through the rest of Baltimore and try to get all the way to Philly. Just outside of Philly. I think we're actually just gonna go for south of Philly. I really need to dump our tanks. I really need to find water because right now we can't use our toilet. We can't use our kitchen. We can't use our sink. So I got a spot in mind. I found something online, but first things first, we got to get there. You guys want to know a funny joke? When we first started this trip, like day five, I was like, honey, maybe we'll do this every year. Maybe we'll make this like a once a year thing. We'll drive to all 50 states, oh 48 God. states. I know. You know what it's like? It's like when you start a new job and like the first like week, amazing. And then like, once you start settling into it, things start getting challenging. You realize your boss is a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, that's what happened with me. That's how you quit after working with me in the restaurant after two weeks. Honey, I didn't quit because of you. Actually, no. Maybe that, maybe that is what I should have said. I quit because technically you, you couldn't date your employees. So I quit in order to, you know. Pursue me? Yeah. But it's not it didn't happen that way. We started dating like six months after that. <laughs> Welcome to Delaware. Yes, Woo! thank you. This is the real question. What's that? What's in Delaware? In Delaware is officially our 46th state. I, I can't believe it. 
I genuinely can't believe it. All right, Delaware, I think you know where we are. Mixed within this memorial is a plaque for a guy named Garrett Lyons, and there's a bush to the right of that plaque and tucked in underneath that bush, you'll find a box with a bag inside of one of the best coffees in the whole world. So that's for you guys, Delaware. You guys enjoy it. All right, peace out, Delaware. That was probably record time in how quickly we went through a state, honey. It was definitely up there with one of the, it was right up there with New Hampshire, that's for sure. <laughs> but at this point, we have two days left, you guys, and two states. Let's go, baby! I can't, I can't even wrap my mind around the fact that we actually uh -oh. are going to do this. There it is. Rest area. That's going to be our home for tonight. This is going to be the last rest area we sleep in for a really long time. Oh my goodness, do you see how beautiful that sign is? Look at that. Start with the black water. Man, look at this water valve. Now for the gray water. Shut this water off. Yeah, that, that's pretty good, honey. honey. Our final rest stop on this trip. And our final rest stop for probably years to come, because we're never doing this again. Maybe we should make like a noise machine that just plays the sound of a roaring diesel truck <laughs> engine. <laughs> <laughs> Puts, it, puts me to bed. It does. <laughs> the vibrations too. Time for bed. Time for bed. <laughs> a new brush our teeth. Though. We are we already brushed our teeth, mm. baby girl. This is our last night on the road. Because tomorrow we're staying back in Massachusetts where we grew up. Seeing family after going on this crazy journey. And tomorrow's gonna be one of my favorite days ever in the history of this channel. If you guys wanna see it. You'll have to watch tomorrow. We'll see you guys bright and early. We'll see you guys in the morning. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Are you scared me over here? Look! What is that? It wasn't that big. Yeah! 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 Yeah!